In this video, we are going to talk about Top Dividend Kings. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to this channel for our future updates. Based on estimated annual returns through 2026, the following five stocks are our top ranked dividend kings today. The stocks are listed from lowest to highest in terms of estimated annual returns. Future earnings per share rise, dividends, and adjustments in the P.E. multiple all contribute to total returns. Number 5. Black Hills Corp. BKH. 5-year annual expected returns. 8.1%. Customers in Colorado, Iowa, Kansas, Montana, Nebraska, South Dakota and Wyoming are served by Black Hills Corporation, which provides power and natural gas. The company's headquarters are in Rapid City, South Dakota, where it was established in 1941. On February 9, Black Hills Corporation released its fourth quarter earnings report. During the quarter, the company reported $490 million in sales, up 2% year over year. The company's fourth quarter earnings per share of $1.23 rose 8.9% year over year, demonstrating the company's resilience during the pandemic. The strong results were primarily due to increased natural gas demand for heating, as shown by the fourth quarter's above average profitability. For the current fiscal year, the company expects earnings per share to range between $3.80 and $4. Due to a slow rate of dividend growth, Black Hills Corporation's dividend payout ratio fell between 2010 and 2019. Currently, the firm distributes about 60% of its net income as dividends. As a result, even during a recession, the dividend payout tends to be safe. The stock has a 2021 P.E. of 17.4, which is slightly lower than our fair value P.E. of 18. In addition, annual EPS growth of 4% is anticipated, with a 3.4% dividend yield resulting in total annual returns of 8.1% over the next five years. Number 4. Johnson & Johnson, JNJ. Five-year annual expected returns. 8.2% JNJ is a multi-billion dollar healthcare conglomerate. It has a market capitalization of more than $400 billion and produces more than $81 billion in annual sales. JNJ produces and sells healthcare goods in three different segments today. 1. Pharmaceuticals. 2. Medical devices. 3. Consumer health products. Its business model is diverse, with strong brands in each of its three main operating segments. Johnson & Johnson released its fourth quarter and full-year earnings results on January 26, 2020. Revenue increased 8.3% to $22.5 billion, but adjusted earnings per share fell 1.1% to $1.86. Revenue increased by 0.6% to $82.6 billion for the year, while adjusted EPS dropped 7.5% to $8.03. Pharmaceutical revenues increased 16.3% year-over-year in the fourth quarter. Consumer sales increased by 1.4% this year. The medical devices segment fell 0.7%, which is an increase over previous quarters. For 2021, the company forecasts sales of $90.5 billion to $91.7 billion and adjusted earnings per share of $9.40 to $9.60. J&J has raised its dividend for 58 years in a row, earning it the title of Dividend King. Right now, the stock is yielding 2.5%. In addition, we anticipate annual earnings per share growth of approximately 6% over the next five years. Finally, the stock's P.E. is 17.1, which is almost identical to our fair value P.E. estimate of 17. For J&J stock, we anticipate total returns of 8.2% per year. Number 3. ABM Industries, ABM. 5-year annual expected returns. 8.3% over the past 53 years, ABM Industries has raised its dividend. Janitorial, electrical and lighting, energy solutions, facilities engineering, HVAC and mechanical, landscape and turf, and parking are all services provided by ABM Industries. On March 9, ABM Industries released its first quarter earnings results, fiscal 2021. The company reported that revenue for the quarter totaled $1.49 billion, which was higher than analyst expectations but also down 8% from the previous year's quarter. 
Lower demand from ABM Industries customers during the coronavirus crisis caused the sales decline, as some customers cut back on orders to save cash. The quarter's earnings per share of $1.01 increased 160% and comfortably outperformed the analyst average by $0.42 cents per share. ABM Industries was able to reduce its costs significantly more than the sales decrease it faced during the quarter, resulting in a significant improvement in profit margins. ABM Industries is forecast to be highly profitable this year, thanks to a good start to fiscal 2021. ABM Industries' dividend appears to be very secure, thanks to its low dividend payout ratio and its very stable, recession-resistant business model. Over the next five years, we anticipate total annual returns of just over 8%, fueled by projected EPS growth of 5%, a 1.5% dividend yield, and a modest boost from a rising P.E. multiple. Number 2. Altria Group, Mo. Five-year annual expected returns. 8.7% Philip Morris formed the Altria Group in 1847. It is now a consumer staples behemoth. In the United States, it sells Marlboro cigarettes as well as a variety of non-smoking brands such as Skoll, Copenhagen, and Stee. Michelle Wine. Altria has a 10% interest in Anheuser-Busch InBev, the world's largest beer company, Bud. Altria released its fourth quarter and full-year financial results on January 28. Revenue of $5.05 billion, net of excise taxes, was up 5.3% year-over-year. Cigarette volumes unexpectedly increased 3.1% for the quarter, breaking a trend of volume declines in recent quarters. For the fourth quarter, adjusted earnings per share fell by 2%. Revenue net of excise taxes rose 5.3% to $20.84 billion for the full year, while adjusted earnings per share increased 3.6% to $4.36 in 2020. Altria anticipates adjusted diluted EPS in the range of $4.49 to $4.62 in 2021, reflecting a 3% to 6% increase over 2020. For tobacco companies like Altria, the long-term outlook is uncertain, which is why the company has invested heavily in adjacent categories to boost future growth. The company invested nearly $13 billion in e-vapor manufacturer Jewel Labs for a 35% equity stake, and recently acquired an 80% ownership stake in Switzerland-based Burger Sohn Group for its on. Oral Nicotine Pouch Brand. It also invested in its own heated tobacco product line, IQOS, as well as Marlboro Heat Sticks, which it plans to expand in 2020. We expect the company's long-term growth to be fueled by new products. We expect annual EPS growth of 3% in the future, powered by sales growth and share repurchases. Altria announced a new $2 billion share repurchase authorization along with its fourth quarter financial results. Meanwhile, Altria's dividend payout seems secure, as the company produces a lot of cash flow, even during downturns. Over the past 51 years, the firm has raised its dividend. Because of its enormous competitive advantages, Altria ranks very high in terms of protection. It operates in a highly controlled industry that effectively prevents new competition in the tobacco industry. Across its product range, Altria has strong brands, including the number one cigarette brand. As a result, it has pricing clout and strong brand recognition. Tobacco firms also benefit from low production and distribution costs due to economies of scale. Altria stock trades for a P.E. ratio of 11.2 marginally higher than our fair value estimate of 11.2, based on the midpoint of 2021 adjusted EPS guidance. For the next five years, total returns are forecast to be 8.7% a year, including 2.4% annual EPS growth and a 6.7% dividend yield. Number 1. Farmers & Merchants Bancorp, FMCB. Five-year annual expected returns. 10.2%. Farmers & Merchants Bancorp, established in 1916, is a locally owned and operated community bank with 32 locations across California. Many investors are unaware of it because of its small market capitalization, $600 million, and poor liquidity. Despite this, F&M Bank has paid dividends for 86 years in a row and has increased its dividend for 56 years in a row. The business is run conservatively, and it had not made an acquisition since 1985 until four years ago. It has, however, started to seek development more vigorously in the last four years. 
In 2016, it bought Delta National Bancorp, bringing its total number of locations to four. Furthermore, it completed the acquisition of Bank of Rio Vista in October 2018, allowing F&M Bank to expand further in the San Francisco East Bay Area. F&M Bank released its financial results for 2020 in early February, the 4th of February 21. Despite the pandemic and low interest rates, the bank increased its earnings per share by 4.8% year-over-year, resulting in a full-year record of $74.03 earnings per share. Net interest income increased by 6.2% in 2020, due to 16.1% growth in loans and a 24% increase in deposits. Unlike other banks, which had to make substantial loan loss provisions as a result of the pandemic, F&M Bank only had to make provisions for 1.9% of its total portfolio. In addition, it was able to increase its net interest margin from 3.80% in the third quarter to 3.86% in the fourth. Despite the economic consequences of the pandemic, management is hopeful for this year as a result of the strong market momentum. The stock currently has a P.E. ratio of 10, which is lower than our fair value estimate of 12. An expanding valuation multiple could result in a small increase in annual returns per year. Total returns are forecast to hit 10.2% a year over the next five years, thanks to expected EPS growth of 5% and a dividend yield of 1.9%. What do you think about our video? Do you want to add something to our list? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications before you go. Thanks for watching.